Welcome back guys to the channel, it's me, Rhymel18, back again today, we are going along the same lines as we have been for the past couple of days, we're continuing on with this Old Firm themed week, uh, as the Old Firm is, is closer and closer because tomorrow it's the day of days, it's going down, it's the Old Firm, 12 o'clock kickoff. get yourself onto Sky Sports at half 11, do not miss the game, fuck the Manchester Derby, get on the Old Firm, there's nothing else like it in world football, and if you don't agree with me, well, get yourself off the channel right now. But today, we're going to do a video based around both Celtic and Rangers, just to be a little bit unbiased towards Rangers. Today, I'm going to give my opinion of what is the greatest combined Celtic and Rangers squad of all time. The greatest combined old firm squad in football, Celtic and football, Celtic and Rangers football history, as I may say. Uh, we're going to go through all 11 positions. Some have been left out that you may love some uh, just didn't make the cut sadly so if you don't see your favourite players in here or people you don't uh, if people you don't think belong here should be replaced by people you do think belong here we'll leave who you think should be here in the comments below this is who I think should be here um, it's purely based on their accomplishments at Celtic uh, and how well they've done at Celtic not just old firms in particular I know I'm saying greatest old firm uh, combined team of all time but it's not just based on their performances in old firm matches so guys without any further ado adieu, 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 let's uh, get into the video and first off we're obviously starting from the back and making our way forward so first we've got the goalkeeper and for the goalkeeper I have decided to go with Packy Bonner uh, Patrick Bonner whatever you want to call him uh, more frequently known as Packy Bonner uh, to go in goals, the Irish national, played for Celtic for, I think it was close to 20 years, maybe even made it to 20 years, and made 483 appearances for the team, as you can see on the card there on the screen. Um, it was a legendary keeper, this one was really hard because there was other keepers who I could have put in, uh, and for Rangers it was the likes of Archie Gorham, and there was also a couple other Celtic keepers who could have went in, and uh, mostly Ronnie Simpson was the other guy I was, I was uh, contemplating a lot, obviously Ronnie Simpson was a Lisbon line, but I purely went with uh, Packy Bonner, because, well, he, 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 it's just legendary, his, uh, his loyalty to the club, 20 years close enough to being at the team, making so many appearances, and he was a fantastic shot stopper, he did a fantastic job at the team, that's why he kept his place in the first team for so long at Celtic, and you can't take that away from him, uh, I think he's a fantastic keeper from the clubs I've seen, obviously I wasn't alive uh, to witness Packy Bonner play, so a lot of these players that I've put in are based on facts, because I think there's only one player in this whole team that played for Celtic and Rangers in my lifetime, um, but yeah, that's the first player I've got in there, I've got Packy Bonner in goals, uh, kicking us off with a Celtic player. Okay, the first fullback in the team is another Celtic player. Don't worry, it's even. I've done six and five. It's not all Celtic players. Uh, but at right back, we've got another Celtic player who was at the club for almost 20 years as well, right through the, the 70s and 80s. We've got Danny McGrain, a legendary right back for Celtic. And still to this day, coaching at Celtic uh, and the coaching staff of Brendan Rodgers. He's been incredibly loyal to the club during his playing and uh, staff career. He's a fantastic guy. Uh, made 439 appearances for the club, which is just legendary. He's remembered as one of Scotland's greatest ever defenders, one of Celtic's greatest ever defenders, and I, I would say without any shadow of a doubt, the best right back, maybe even best full back that ever put on a Celtic jersey. Uh, and close to being one of the best defenders. The only players I think that can overtake him in the best defenders part is the players I'm going to have at the centre back roles. But Danny McGrain makes it in as the right back for this team, a legendary figure for Celtic. Uh, if you don't know who he is, look him up, he's still coaching. Uh, I hope he's coaching for a lot longer, uh, even despite nearly 70 year old. So Danny McGrain is the right back. Okay, our first uh, Rangers player uh, in the team here is a centre back. We have got John Gregg, who is legendary to Rangers fans. If you're a Rangers fan, you know who John Gregg is. I don't need to say much about him, he was captain of Rangers. For years, he made 498 appearances for the club, and for a centre-back, he also scored 89 goals. Now, all the, by the way, all these facts I'm taking from Wikipedia, so they might not be 100% accurate, but they are close to being accurate as far as I know. But 89 goals for a centre-back, that is terrific. It was some centre-back, uh, so I hear from family members. Uh, one of the players I don't know a lot about... Uh, from how he performed on the pitch, but I've heard his name, I know he's a legend, and coming from a Celtic fan, you know he's one of Scotland's greatest ever centre-backs, and it's really hard to decide who was better between him and Billy McNeil, um, if you were uh, around watching those two play in their prime, 
But John Gregg is the one kicking off the two uh, centre halves in the team. Uh, and a legendary figure to Scottish football, it's John Gregg. Okay, the next centre half, I mentioned his name, we'll talk about John Gregg. It's Billy McNeil, uh, arguably Celtic's greatest ever player without a doubt, Celtic's greatest ever captain, and Celtic's greater, greatest ever defender. Billy McNeil was the man who lifted the trophy for us in 1967 when we won the European Cup. Uh, King Billy, some people like to call him statue outside Celtic Park to commemorate everything he'd done for the club. He is a real icon and hero to Celtic fans. And I mean, I wasn't even alive, but I look up to the guy. I mean, what a hero he is. He's still around this day. He's one of the Lisbon Lions who's actually left, who's not died, sadly. Uh, some have passed away, but Billy McNeil is still uh, alive and kicking. Uh, he's had, he had 486 appearances for Celtic in his time. Not scoring as many goals as John Gregg, with 22 goals, but he was a real tough defender at the back. He was captain of Celtic for years and even managed Celtic for a while as well. His managerial contributions can't be ignored. Um, but he done a fantastic job in his playing career at Celtic, uh, greatest ever captain, and we've got him here at centre half. Okay, at left back we have Sandy Jardin, a man who uh, recently, well, only a couple of years ago, passed away. Uh, real shame, but he was a left back for Rangers and is known to be one of Scotland's greatest ever defenders. He has a stand named after him at Ibrooks. Uh, the, the biggest stand in Ibrooks actually is named after. Sandy Jardin, I think it's the biggest stand anyway, uh, he had 451 appearances for the club, scoring 42 goals and uh, as far as I'm, I know from Rangers fans was considered a real icon, uh, it's a shame he passed away a couple of years ago. One thing you will notice in this video is the appearances that Celtic and Rangers players had for, the, for Celtic and Rangers when back in the day, I mean they were incredibly loyal to their teams and one here is Sandy Jardin. 451 appearances, it can't go ignored, the accomplishments he had with Rangers while he was at the club, unbelievable. Uh, I mean, you've got to admire the loyalty of, of all these players here, you see every player so far in this team has had over 400 appearances uh, for Celtic and Rangers and that is just incredible loyalty, and you, something you don't see too often nowadays in football players, you know, they make their mark at a team, they spend a couple of seasons there and they're off, but these players were loyal to their teams and uh, Sandy Jardin, one of them, he's the left back in this squad. Next up guys, is the right midfielder and this is the man who most people say is the greatest Celtic player of all time, potentially the greatest Scottish footballer of all time, it is Jimmy aka Jinky Johnson, fantastic player, um, I mean you just see clips from him and the, the skill on Jimmy Johnson, honestly you, you could put the guy up against Lionel Messi to say his dribbling was as good, I mean Jimmy Johnson was a real you know, he could have played for the likes of Manchester United and been the best player easily on their team, but he spent most of his career at Celtic, he ended his career somewhere else, I believe it may have been Nottingham Forest, but he had 515 appearances for Celtic, scoring 129 goals, and as I said, he was just magic with the ball, his dribbling was fantastic, you watch clips from him, he was one of the, the, Lisbon, the Lisbon Lions, he's a hero, he's got a statue as well outside Celtic Park, sadly, he died in 2005, he did go through a rough patch in his life where he turned to alcohol, uh, etc, but uh, he managed to pull his life back on track, but sadly died, I think it might have been with motor neurons disease in 2005, it was a real shame, uh, but he is, I would say, the greatest Celtic player of all time, most people would say he's the greatest Celtic player of all time, and that's why he's the right midfielder for this Celtic and Rangers squad. Okay, the first centre mid in the squad is uh, going to be Brian Laudrup, right, I've been so tempted to say Mike, uh, Michael Laudrup, but it's Brian Laudrup who uh, played for Rangers during the 80s, maybe 90s, I can't remember, I didn't research this one a lot, but he was one of Rangers' big expensive signings when uh, David Murray took charge of the club, as far as I believe, if I'm wrong, don't abuse me Rangers fans, I'm not as educated on Rangers as I am Celtic, as I'm a Celtic fan, uh, but Brian, Brian Laudrup made 116 appearances for the club, not as much as most of the other players here, but that's because he was such a big name, you know, he eventually left um, Rangers, not a lot to say about uh, Brian Laudrup, but he is remembered as a Rangers icon, maybe not as big as the likes of John Gregg, Sandy Jardin, but he was a real big part of Rangers' nine in a row squad in the 1980s, so he can't go ignored for his accomplishments at Rangers, and is still remembered as one of Rangers' best centre mids. Um, if, I, if you think there's been a better Rangers centre mid, let me know, but Brian Laudrup, sorry, yeah, Brian, I, I keep getting confused if it's Brian and his brother Michael, both of them are legends on FIFA. But let me know if you think there's anyone better than Brian Lodger, but he has took one of the central midfield places in the Celtic Rangers squad. 
Taking the second central midfielder spot, this one was really hard to decide. It was out of two players, both Lisbon Lions. One of them was Stevie Chalmers, but the one I decided to put in the team was Bertie Ald. And I know it says right mid on his card. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. It should say central midfielder. But Bertie Ald took the place in the, the central midfielder spot. For me, it could have easily been for the likes of it could have been it could have went to Scott Brown as well because Scott Brown's been incredibly loyal to Celtic. He's captain Celtic for years now. He's a fantastic player, but I felt like I was going to get a lot of backlash for neglecting the likes of Stevie Chalmers and Bertie Old. So I have put Bertie Old in this squad. Bertie Old still alive right now. Um, he is a Lisbon Lion. Uh, if you don't know what the Lisbon Lions is, by the way, it was the team that won the European Cup with Celtic in 1967, nicknamed the Lisbon Lions due to the fact they won it in Lisbon. Um, but it made 176 appearances for the club, scoring 43 goals. He's remembered as an icon legend, still regularly attends games as far as I believe he's done the Paradise Windfall a couple of times, a half-time lottery. He's a real Celtic legend, a really nice guy. Uh, honestly, he, he's a, you see him in a lot of documentaries and he, he seems like a real cheery character and probably one of the characters in the changing rooms that people loved, everybody got along with and remembered as a real great to Celtic and that's why he is featured in this team. Right, on to the left mid position, a guy that was actually more of a right mid as far as I know. It's another Johnson, it's not Jimmy Johnson, don't worry, he didn't play for Celtic and Rangers. It is Derek Johnson, who played for Rangers as a right midfielder, known as a Rangers legend. Now, these are, this is the only player on this team I know I, nothing, absolutely nothing about. To be honest, before I made this video, I didn't know who Derek Johnson was, I'm going to be quite honest with you. But looking up about him, he's a, Celt, uh, a Rangers legend. Uh, he made so many appearances for the club, 369 to be precise. Scoring 132 goals and when I look at websites reading about him, Rangers fans really do consider him as one of the greatest to ever put on the Rangers top, which is why I felt like I had to put him in this team. It was between him and Davy Cooper to get this spot and Rangers fans love Davy Cooper, uh, one of the greatest Rangers players of all time, but uh, Davy Cooper was more of a forward so I gave this position to Derek Johnson over on the left. A Rangers legend, um, I couldn't tell you much about him, so don't ask me to expand or anything in the comments, but there you go, the left midfield on this team is Rangers very own Derek Johnson. So coming to the end of the squad, it's time to get to the forwards of our team. Uh, first off, we've got Ali McCoist. You may recognise Ali McCoist if you're not a Celtic Rangers fan or a Scottish football fan from the Ladbrokes adverts with Chris Kamara, but trust me, he's much more than that. As much as I hate the guy, right, I'm not going to lie, I'm not a fan of Ali McCoist whatsoever. Um, he is one of the greatest Scottish strikers of all time, one of the greatest Scottish players in general of all time, uh, and a Rangers legend. He played 418 games with Rangers during the 90s um, and scored 251 goals, that's a massive amount. Uh, once again, David Cooper was in contention to get this place, but just looking at the stats, uh, I had to go to Alan McCoist. Alan McCoist, as much as I hate him, I will give him props, he was really loyal to the club during the situation they went through a few years ago when they went to from administration to liquidation and got demoted to Division 3. It was he was manager when they got demoted and it, you know it was very easy for him to say, you know what, I'm off, I'm I'm getting off this this mess of a team. Uh, I'm I'm leaving. But he stuck by Rangers right up until they got to the championship. He was sacked uh, right enough because he didn't do successful in the first time in the championship. But you know, he, he went through Division 3 and Division 2 with them, straight promotions, got them to the championship uh, and left uh, Quite a job for Mark Warburton to do, uh, quite a team to improve, but I mean his loyalty has got to be admired for staying with the team through the sticky situation that they were in, and he's just overall one of the greatest players to ever put on a Rangers top. So uh, Alan McCoy takes the first forwards place in this squad. Okay, finally the last place goes to none other than Henrik Larsson. This place could have went to Jimmy McGrory, but I had to go with Henrik Larsson. Henrik Larsson is known as one of the greatest Celtic players of all time and he, you know he's quite he's far more recent than Jimmy McGrory. I had to put Larson in. He, he's won a Champions League with Barcelona, you know he's re he's really remembered as a iconic player of world football and not just Celtic. He's a fantastic player playing for Man United Barcelona, mostly Celtic. He's, most of his career was spent at Celtic. 221 appearances for the team, 174 goals in 221 games, that is an incredible, incredible record. Celtic fans admire the guy. Honestly, one of the best things that could ever happen to Celtic. Uh, helped us get to a UEFA Cup final in 2003. Uh, just an absolute 
wonder of a player once in a lifetime you get Celtic we'll probably never see anything like Henrik Larsson again I mean Lee Griffiths scored 40 goals last season but Henrik Larsson was just an absolute magician an absolute legend at what he done and he deserves every bit of fame respect credit he, that he gets from Celtic fans and fans from all over the world he is a true legend to world football and probably one of the best players in this whole team uh, much more recent than most of the other players in the team. A lot of the players are from the 60s, the 70s, uh, the 80s. Henrik Larsson obviously left Celtic in 2004, but he's an icon, a legend, and uh, he deserves his place in this squad. So that's it, guys. That's it from me. I thought this was a pretty good video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button if you thought there's players I've missed out or should have given an honourable mention. Uh, more on the video too well let me know in the comments who I did not mention that should have been mentioned but I feel like this is the strongest team that could have been put together from Celtic and Rangers players I've done it as even as possible 6 and 5 6 Celtic players 5 Rangers players mostly for the fact I'm a Celtic fan so I call the shots here um, I think it's a pretty good team let me know your opinions if I was to pick a manager it has to be Jockstein can't be anybody else no one else no one has anything on Jockstein he would be the manager of this team and honestly if this team was around at any point in world football whether that be the 60s the 80s even right now I believe in their primes this would be a team who would dominate the UEFA Champions League without any shadow of a doubt let me know what you think guys if you've enjoyed it hit subscribe keep growing the channel and I'll see you guys next time